Our Lord said, Yotaunum, he was talking about not one jot, one tittle to be taken away from his words. And he said, my words will be everlasting. Heaven will pass, earth shall pass, but my words will remain. That means the truth cannot change. See, St. Vincent of Larence, he's quoted by uh, the first Vatican Council, which is without a doubt one of the most important and one of the most beautiful councils in the history of the church. And they quote St. Vincent of Larence saying, yes, there is a progress in tradition, in the sense that you deepen the understanding, but eodem senso eodem sententia, always in the same sense and in the same judgment. Sententia is a judgment. Always in the same sense and the same judgment. That means the truth cannot change. And if anybody tells you that the truth changes according to the times, he has ceased to be a Catholic. And that, unfortunately, is true now for the Pope and most of the Cardinals and most of the bishops. This is why I have become the bull in the china shop. Are you saying they are not Catholic? Materially, yes. Well, you have to be careful about the distinction. Material heresy and material schism means it's there, but it's not declared, it's not wanted. See, if the Pope, if the Pope says, and he does, the Pope says, in accordance with tradition, I tell you that the Spirit of Christ does not refrain from giving salvation to the efforts of Protestant churches. I'm quoting Catechesi Tradenda number 32. If he says, in accordance with tradition, I tell you this, then he's simply wrong and pronouncing heresy, but not wanting to, because he says, in accordance with tradition, I tell you. If he was to say, I don't care what the Council of Florence said, I don't care what Pope Eugen IV say, I tell you, in that case, he ceases to be Pope. That's common opinion among uh, canon lawyers and theologians, that if the Pope was to pronounce formal heresy, that means declared as such, undeniable such. He doesn't, he's just uh, contradictory, that's all. And uh, if I, on the pulpit, if I was to say, oh, well, of course, uh, Christ doesn't mind saving Protestants, I would be pronouncing heresy. But if I was to say, no matter what the Pope said, no matter what the Council said, I say that Christ will save the Protestants, then I'm pronouncing formal heresy, I become objectively, formally a heretic. And if I just make a mistake, even if I repeat the mistake, I'm not a formal heretic. The heresy is there, but I don't want it to be such. Now with the present, this is why I mentioned, with the present concept of tradition, one shouldn't be surprised that we get these uh, funny statements. Because if uh, Vatican II in De Verbum VIII says the pro tradition knows progress, and this progress comes about through the study of the believers and their experiences. That is heresy. Say that again, John. The progress in tradition comes about by people studying the faith, studying the Bible, and through their religious experiences. So therefore, the dogma that was taught by the church in the past was not hope. Uh, it's, it, uh, it, it would seem so. Well, what the council is trying to say is that um, it's, it's a mistaken sense of what is called the sensus fidelium. The sensus fidelium was always described, even by St. Augustine, as uh, the sense for what all people believed all the time and everywhere. So if, if, you, tell, if you tell the average Catholic who has not studied theology, doesn't know anything, that God is four persons, he will say, what? And he will not accept it. He hasn't studied theology. He has not studied the, uh, the question of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Son being man and God at the same time, which we know is one and the same person, but he has not studied it. He would not be able to prove what he says academically, but yet at the same time he knows that God is one in three and three in one. He doesn't understand it, he cannot explain it scientifically, but it's his sensus fidelium, it's his sensus fidelium the sense of the, the, the sense of the, the faithful have for the truth, which does not make it a majority 
decision. When some people today accuse me of saying things that go against the vast majority of the bishops, the vast majority of the clergy, and the vast majority of the people, I can only say, okay, that's one generation. The census fidelium is for all people for 2,000 years, all Catholics, of course. Because a Buddhist cannot have the census fidelium. You see, the, the whole problem today, uh, I think the root of the problem is the mistaken concept of tradition. To call tradition something that can change, something that can grow with the, the study of the people, with the insights that the people have, it doesn't. Tradition is complete. Tradition is one and complete. The only thing the popes can do is deepen the understanding of it by defining terms that were not yet clear enough. And uh, this is the, this root for the whole problem. You can find in the famous document Ecclesia Dei, where in number four, the present pope accuses Archbishop Lefebvre and his followers of a wrong concept of tradition. Well, Archbishop Lefebvre and his followers were doing nothing else but quoting the Council of Trent and First Vatican Council on tradition. And if you read, which is something that I did, and if you read all the sermons and all the speeches that Archbishop Lefebvre ever gave, you will always find the same concept of tradition. And it's exactly the concept of tradition to be found in, in, the, in the First Vatican Council. And then the Pope says, no, this is wrong. Does that mean the Pope is talking about new doctrines? Yes, he does. In the same Ecclesia Dei document, he mentions the new aspects of doctrine. He says there are some people who cannot get along with uh, uh, the teachings of Vatican II because some of the aspects of this teaching are new. Well, at the same First Vatican Council, Pope Pius IX defined solemnly in his Constitutio Dogmatica Prima Pastor Eternus de Ecclesia Christi of the 18th July of 1870, he defined the infallibility of the Pope. He did not only define the infallibility of the Pope, he also defined the limits of this infallibility. When he said, but the Holy Spirit was not promised to the successors of Peter to reveal a new doctrine with his assistance, with his uh, revelation, but to defend, that means to guard the depositum fide, the deposit of faith that has been handed down from the apostles, to guard this in a holy way and to explain it in the most faithful way. As a matter of fact, the Latin text speaks about ut sancte custodirent et fideliter exponerent. To guard in a holy way and to explain in a faithful way. So the Holy Spirit has not been given to the Pope to reveal anything new. Spiritus Sanctus non enim promissus fuit successoribus petri ut eo revelante aliquam to novam doctrinam patefacerent. It was not given to them to reveal a new doctrine. So when the present Pope in his Ecclesia Dei speaks about the new aspects of doctrine even, already he's going against the fourth chapter of the dogmatic definition of infallibility. 